previously on Masks and Martyrs. You are Reagan Kaya. So you adopted my sister. We've treated her as best we can. You have no allies right now. Not as such, no. You got me at your disposal. What, what's we gotta do? Something is moving underneath our estate. So something's in the basement, and I gotta go kill it. When you look at yourself in the mirror, do you see a good man? I don't think there are good men. If possible, I would like a word with Miss Cha. Alone, if possible. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. How much would it cost for you to kill someone? Who are we talking about? Me. Whatever happens these next few months, Miss Cha, I will not become another Erwin von Templer. No. Giles will take you. He will be showing you and your companions down to the basement. As you kind of like look between each other, and you look down at the doors, you see that one of them is open, and it wasn't open a second ago. You see from within the darkened room, there is simply a floating white mask that then fades back into the shadows. Found it! So, uh, welcome back. Let's uh, let's jump into it. Um, so, last session, uh, and sort of the last couple sessions, uh, after uh, the events of the Masked Mayhem, after around a week, y'all were uh, sort of in the residence when Rufus returned. Rufus uh, was... Well, he was Rufus, and he was upset about things, as Rufus is wont to be. And uh, he had been invited to a soiree, a little private dinner for some of the movers and shakers uh, by the Gorings, uh, sort of uh, in, sort of uh, to, you know, socialize, mix, make whatever business deals folks want to, uh, all before their masquerade. Um, The masquerade season has kind of been a bit delayed after the attempted murder of... uh, uh, all the city's nobility, but um, as as it's uh, on its way to getting to kicking back off. But uh, in the meantime, these are sort of the placeholders. Uh, the three of you volunteered to go with Rufus, um, uh, and this was largely due to Reagan because you wanted to uh, find out if, in fact, your sister, your younger sister Ellie, uh, was with the Gorings. The team uh, got all all you know. Got all all swanky, got the best duds on, uh, and you uh, went. You went to the estate with Rufus. Upon arriving at the estate, you encountered a number of individuals, including uh, Gleta, uh, the Tiefling Fixer, uh, Lady Sayakam, who had uh, one of the uh, most devastating Monty. Uh, attacks uh, I've never seen, <laughs> um, as well as the uh, as well as the cousin of uh, Anastasia Minata, your first black male slash employer, more black male than employer in the city. Afterwards, uh, sort of after the, uh, we'll say like sort of the reception, uh, the Gorings revealed themselves and invited everyone to dinner. Reagan immediately, upon seeing Ellie, approached her. Uh, however, she was pulled away by uh, Lady Claudia, Lord Goring's sister. Lady Claudia uh, explained that things were a bit more complicated to Reagan and uh, essentially convinced the team uh, to meet, uh, to slip out when they can and meet uh, in a private room to discuss matters of uh, Ellie's future. Upon arriving, they were met not by Claudia, but by uh, her brother, the Lord Julius Goring. At one point, the second most powerful man in the city, Julius, uh, being his uh, Julius, uh, his most distinctive feature being uh, a uh, rather ugly uh, puckered scar along his neck uh, of some earlier violence done upon him. Uh, he sat down with the team and 
proved to be uh, perhaps a, a, a cat of a different stripe from what you had expected. Um, he, after some negotiation, some discussion, uh, he made you a deal, which was essentially uh, you help him with the matter of uh, an intruder down below uh, who had somehow who had been coming in and out of the estate for some time now. Do it discreetly so that uh, there no one uh, saw so no one saw anything too suspicious. Uh, and then uh, he and while you're doing that, he would arrange as best he could to allow uh, Ellie, going by Cynthia here, uh, ostensibly the cousin of the Gorings, uh, allow Ellie to meet with Reagan in a private uh, setting. Uh, additionally, uh, he revealed some things about uh, Erwin von Tepler, uh, as well as uh, he uh, had a few words with Brika before uh, the party descended down into the basements. Um, you were brought there by Giles, uh, the orcish butler, uh, who was very glad to see that the young lord was getting along with, uh, with, uh, with folks. And, um, and yeah, where we left off, uh, I believe that y'all, uh, were standing at the beginning of a hallway and, uh, all the way down, maybe 40 feet, there was an open door shrouded in darkness, or the inside shrouded in darkness, and as you came down, you saw a porcelain mask just apparently floating in the shadows. And upon noticing it, it drifted back, lost to sight. Currently, it is you three and Rufus. Uh, so, what do you want to do? First... <gasps> <laughs> okay, now I'm good. Reagan uh, cracks her neck and, and heads down the hallway, I guess. Reagan, you can't punch a ghost! It doesn't work like that! You haven't seen me try. <laughs> Reagan punched quite a few things. But none of them were incorporeal. <laughs> it's probably not really ghost. Probably just old man Jenkins. Old man Jenkins, always wearing a mask and floating ominously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is his, his number one thing. <laughs> Classic. Okay. So, um... Cool. Reagan's walking. Bye, losers. <laughs> I guess Brika's gonna follow. Um, can sure. I, like, try and check for traps as we're walking? Like, is there any, does it, like, I don't know how, how Roll the investigation this check. thing is. Um, based on the fact, like, are, are, are you taking time or are you trying to keep pace with them? I'm trying to keep pace with them, but I'm gonna make um, it. I'll, I'd say roll investigation check with, dis with disadvantage if you're also trying to keep pace because you're not able to give sort of like the the undivided attention that you want to each individual thing. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I rolled two sixes. Woo! Uh, um, okay, so what's six plus eight? Fourteen? So the fourteen, um... Uh, I don't think you're able to see anything, like, obvious. Um, you assume that if there were anything hidden, this is a lord's manor, and so it'd be kind of tough to, uh, you know, it'd be kind of tough to, uh, to see. Uh, you assume if there were any defenses, they'd be very well hidden. Maybe if you had more time, you could, you know, uh, do a more thorough investigation, but, uh, Reagan does not seem particularly bothered by this. Nope. Quicker okay. we get done here, quicker that. I get to go hang out with my sister. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, you come up to the door. Uh, it is still dark inside. Hold on, let me check my inventory. <laughs> <laughs> I have an explorer's pack. Do I have, like, torches and shit? Hold on. Oh, wait, I just realized I probably don't have my explorer's pack, huh? No. No. Uh, because like a party. you are currently, like, all, you know, all dressed well, up. Are there any to go out torches in this hallway? Because I assume it's lit by something. Um, roll a perception check for me. That's um her strong suit, man. You really don't I want know. to roll against wisdom with Reagan. Oh, I know. That's why I've never Would made an amazing intro. Would you like me to look for it with my dark vision? That's a um seventeen. So suck oh, okay. it. Sure. <laughs> suck it, dark um, vision. <laughs> so there are uh like so there are uh metal. 
Uh, so down here, uh, up above there, are, it's much more tasteful uh, lighting, but down here, uh, sort of in the basements, uh, even in this long corridor, there are metal uh, wall sconces that have these uh, kind of like metal uh, torches in them. I think that you're able to find uh, one, maybe like three doors down on the left, which you could probably, which you feel like you could probably break off. You're pretty strong. She's doing it. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Do you even need me to roll? Because she did bend the prison bars the first session, you know? <laughs> I, I, I do need you to roll this because that was a fight or flight situation. This is, you know, the adrenaline. Oh may not no. I rolled a three plus like five, but you know. <laughs> three plus five. No, okay. Um, is it like a straight strength check or an athletics? Check? Uh, it would be a straight strength check. Could um, mage hand? Could mage hand pull it down? Uh, so it's not about like reaching it; it's about like actually like ripping it off of the wall. Right. Can, I, um, can she? Can she try again? Uh, yeah, you can try again. She's not going anywhere. Oh, I actually, I actually might be able to help with this. Hold on, let me double check something. Wow. No. Just uh, eight that time. Oof. Um. So Reagan, uh, as as you're kind of like walking and you like plant your feet on the w- wall, you're trying to like yank this out. Uh, Rufus is gonna come up and he's gonna help. Oh, okay. Uh, uh and Rufus got a twenty. Not That's a natural, Rufus. but a twenty. And he just he like rips it. <laughs> he does not actually like rip the torch off cleanly. Um, some of the wall comes with it. Uh, nice. And he hands it to you. And you re- and you're and like I and like every now and then you know like Rufus you know he's 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 kind of like always a bit sad a little bit too drunk most of the time always a little like neurotic and fretful but you, so, every now and then you sort of remember oh yeah Rufus is really jacked like yeah. Rufus is fucking cut as hell thanks Rufus it's, it's these sleeves they're like tight and stuff <laughs> yeah no that's yeah I I trust me I know I had to. Uh, that's why, and he like sort of raises his arms over his head, and you can see he's actually like, slit uh, the cloth on his armpits. Like, see, it helps a lot with moving around. I learned that after like my fourth uh, s- s- guy swap. Yeah, yeah, Dude, that one. Sweet, that Rika, can one. I borrow your knife? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Reagan's gonna kind of slit open her armpits. Oh God! See, I assumed school. that she was wearing a backless dress, but that's just me. <laughs> no, she's wearing like a tunic, a fancy tunic. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, Reagan got those pants. Reagan, Reagan rocked those pa- pant legs. Anyway, now it has holes in the armpits. <laughs> nice. I can light this with firebolt, probably. Oh no 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 no! They are, they are lit. They are lit. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize it was lit. I thought we were in darkness. Got it. Okay, Reagan's gonna go back to the room with her new torch and piece of wall. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to say that um, that piece of wall is the, the makeshift shield you said I can grab. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's pretty, uh... That's a I like that. Yeah. I think, I like, I, I like the idea of Reagan with, like, with, like, some, like, masonry. Mm-hmm. Dry and, and, like, and, like yeah. gripping it, like, uh, you kind of, like, reverse hand the grip. Yeah. Uh, so that, like, you're holding up the, the piece of masonry, uh, as your shield. I like that a lot, actually. Yeah. That's a really cool image. So there you go. Um, <laughs> so... As you all uh, approach uh, with the torch, uh, the mask uh, returns. Uh, and it is just sitting there staring forward. Reagan punches it. <laughs> no, wait! Uh, Reagan, make an attack roll for me. Fuck. Is this, I guess, would just be like unarmed strike, which is. Yeah, plus- an unarmed strike. And I don't. Are, are you proficient in unarmed strikes? I don't think so. I don't think you are. No, I think, no, no. I think it's a. Definitely not. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it'd just be your strength modifier then. Okay, so 13. Okay, um, so Reagan, uh, you, like, punch in and you fill your fist connect to the mask. However, um, as you strike it, uh, it, like, moves with it. Like, it, let, like, you don't feel connect and it pushes the mask in. And then you realize as the mask, like, just disappears from view, you realize, um, whatever this is, it's not normal darkness. Um, Reagan, I need you. We are gonna make uh, contested athletics rolls. All right. Your grapple check, and you are making yours at disadvantage. Okay. Uh, um, I got two eighteens. Okay. Um, so Reagan, uh, you feel something like beginning to like, s- like sort of swirl around your hand and kind of 
almost sink into it. Think of it kind of like uh, like the thickest pudding you've ever put a spoon into. Or your fist into, if you're Reagan. <laughs> and, yes, or your fist if you're Reagan. Um, I think that uh, sort of as it's beginning to coalesce and condense, though, you're able to just, like, instinctively, sensing the danger, you yank your arm out, and as you do, uh, this what look to be just these these threads, these long like bits of shadow stretched out with it as you manage like pull them off, snapping them as you as you go. Uh, you do manage to break free into the final pull and you jump back uh, alongside your friends. Uh, 30 feet. <laughs> uh, and just kind of like jog back um, at the strange thing that just happened. Hey guys, don't don't touch it. I could have told you that. Now we know for sure. Mm. Mm. It's science, Montiel. I thought you'd like it. <laughs> okay. Uh, R- Rufus says, so, uh, that was weird, right? That wasn't normal? Can I, can, is there any way that I could, like, identify what type of creature this is, if it's a creature? If... Make an intelligence check. Yeah, give me a straight intelligence check. Straight intelligence uh. Yeah, anyway, uh, Rufus, that's never happened to me before when I've punched something, except that one time I punched pudding. Are you are you are you ready? Are you ready for the really really good intelligence check that I just rolled? Yeah, what was it? Seven. <laughs> Seven. Um, that's including my modifier. Darkness is weird. Right? Darkness is, guys. It's really dark over there, you guys. I think I think that what you do realize, Montague, I think it kind of like sits in the back of your mind for a moment. Is uh. You have dark vision, right? You can see through things. And so whatever this is, uh, it seems as though the darkness is either a part of it or a result of it. Okay. As you're kind of looking at it, uh, the mask uh, sort of uh, slips forward again. And as you're closer now and able to focus on it, you see that it's all it, it, it kind of like pushes out and you can see it just beginning to, like the imprint of it pushing past uh, this sort of like gooey shadow and once it does uh, it kind of like breaks through it uh, almost like a face breaking uh, the surface of a still pool of water and the mask sort of stares at the four of you for a moment and then you hear a voice Uh, it does not come from anywhere instead it echoes in your minds and the voice says are you here to pay the price Everyone else here on that? What price are you looking to be paid? The price must be paid. How much? Yeah, that's. Uh... I, I don't think it's talking literally. Maybe it is. Enter, and the price will be paid. If I enter, do I get to leave? Uh, there is a, a long pause. And then the voice says, to you alone, Reagan, if the price is paid, the compact is finished. So guys, I'm saying that if the price is paid, the compact's finished, and I don't know what the hell that means. Rufus, uh, you got any experience with floating masks that want money? Uh. (laughs) Or blood? uh, Probably blood, right? Normally, when I, uh, so, uh. No. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, me neither. Is there is there anything that Monty would know about this kind of contract? What it's asking? Is there anything? Inside? Uh, give me an arcana check, Monty. I'm going to throw out every single one of these dice because that was... I can do math. That was a ten. Woo! I think that you know that uh, there are a number of beings... To whom bargains are important, um, I think that you, I think that you recognize that on some level, uh, most magic in this world, most uh, important things in people are, on some level, tied to bargains. Okay, who's your contract with? Compact, whatever the hell you just said, dude. Uh, there is uh, another pause, and then the voice says. The terms are not to be discussed with others. Hmm. 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 And you can't tell us what the price is before we pay it? You will know the price 
but you must enter first. It's probably, like, dying. That's a poor business practice. Can we practice. get a refund? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I want to speak to your manager. <laughs> no! <laughs> it does not respond to that. Oh, not it. even like an I am the manager. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think, uh... I don't think this is the I don't think this is the wittiest uh the wittiest entity that y'all are facing down right now. So sidebar, real quick, I personally have a theory that maybe would have occurred to Reagan, but would you prefer that I have her role for smart before I you know No, I think I think that um like I don't like I personally don't like to limit players in terms cool. of like like if a player thinks of something like like that's dope, do it. otherwise I'd be like, oh what's that, Reagan? He wanted something cool. I don't know. Yeah. Well, whether you would have thought it would be something cool. <laughs> like, like that's not fun. That's fair. We're gonna have fun. So, here's what I'm thinking. And Reagan's talking to everybody. Uh, sounds to me like somebody who lives here, probably Claudia, uh, maybe Lord Goring, but I like him. He hates the Von Teplers as much as I do. Somebody made a contract for power, probably, and it sounds like whoever it was, probably Claudia, sent us down here either, you know, she said to deal with it. My, my theory is that it's her contract and she just wants it sealed in blood or whatever bullshit and she sent us down here to die. That said, I do need her to let me see my sister. So does anybody have a projectile on them? Do you want a physical projectile, or do you want All right, a... you're, like, made of magic projectiles. Why don't you just, uh... Well, like, that's my question. Like, I I am trying, uh... I want to see if we can damage it. You want to see if you can damage it? Yeah, I want to fight this thing. That's what, that's what they told us to do. That's the job. Kill the thing. Uh... I mean, it was kill the intruder, but obviously this is that, this is that, so. It's just, it's, uh, the, 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 oh, the intellectual curiosity of it all. I want to know what it is. Well, Monty, then you should have rolled better. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I can do a necropsy on a ghost. Um, okay. Maybe you can't. Hey, Rufus, you got anybody who can do that? <laughs> well, uh, oh, I... Oh, uh, <laughs> like, what, what, weird ghost shit? Uh... Mortis. Yeah, Mortis. Like after, oh god, no, not anybody but ghost. Mortis. I'll do anything to Double not talk ghost. to Mortis. Uh, I I don't know anybody else who does, like, it's okay. magic stuff. It's okay. Really. It's fine. All right. But, he, but um, he knows he knows bodies. He worked as an undertaker. He always brings it up a lot. You know? Oh, god. Um, I can try a couple of different things. I can start with, like, Mage Hand and then try Firebolt, see if it interacts with it. Yeah, don't do anything too crazy yet, because I just, you know, I, I'm just trying to piss it off. Probably. Yeah, I'm gonna, um, uh, can, can Mage Hand, Andrew, can Mage Hand create, like, an unarmed attack effect? Uh, no, it cannot. Um, oh, okay, so then I'll have to do Otherwise, fireball. otherwise we'd have, like, fucking 60-foot, like, boxing wizards, which <laughs> I have, which... Honestly, it wouldn't be a bad thing, necessarily, but it's not really d d Um, okay, so I guess I'll start with Firebolt. I'll try and cast Firebolt on it. Uh, make a attack roll for me. Okay, that's not as bad. That's a 17. Uh, 17 hit. Roll damage. Oh, wow. Um, 9 and 9. Woo! Hmm. So, Monty, uh, you, uh, step forward and, uh, you carve out the air with three curt gestures uh, of arcane power, and with each gesture, uh, your fingers begin to glow more, uh, and they leave behind uh, a more, like, a longer-lasting, brighter line in the air. Upon connecting the third gesture to the beginning of the first, uh, you push your hand through, and a bolt of fire rips forth, and it shoots out, striking directly into the mask. Uh, however, as it hits it, it's almost like the shadows slip up over it for a moment and uh, you burn away some of that kind of like gooey darkness. And then uh, all four of you hear a scream. Mm. Uh, I need each of you to make wisdom saving throws. Well, you know what they say about Reagan and wisdom. (laughs) Monty's not very wise either. Um, Reagan got a 12. And Brie okay. got a six. Okay. Monty got a four. Woo! 
Did you get a natural one? No, I got a three and my wisdom is plus one. All right, well, just so you know, uh, wizards are proficient in wisdom saving throws. Are they? Oh, so they go. are! Never mind. So that's an eight. Uh, not that it matters, though. <laughs> uh, all three of you uh, are going to take some damage as this uh, psychic just screech uh, echoes through your minds. Uh, each of you are going to take nine points of psychic damage. Okay. Yikes. Uh, and then the darkness, which up until this point has not crossed the threshold of this room, spills forward. <clears throat> Long tendrils just reaching out along the walls, pulling it forward uh, as if as if each of these is in- individual arms trying to pull forward some great mass behind it as uh, it just begins charging you. I need everyone to roll initiative. Woo! Oh my god. Oh my god. Let's oh fight my god. the shadows. I mean, look, you know, when you shoot fire at the thing, it's not going to like it, I don't think. Uh, I think that's fair. I think that's a good I was assuming what I thought was going to happen was I thought it was going to absorb the blow and spit it back at us, honestly. That's something that could be cool, but I I generally don't like to do that because then it I, I hate mirror enemies. I hate mirror <laughs> enemies so much. Oh man, shadow it's me. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just oh no no no. I, I, I don't mind sh- I don't mind doppelgangers because then I, I get to I get to eat parties with their own power. But no, uh Oh, all right. So the creature is got an eighteen. Also, I'm assuming I just have my sword because usually she has. Regan's got hand axes too, but yeah, just the sword. Because I it can looks... make an argument for the sword as an accessory, but there, there's definitely a point where it's like, where it's like, it's like, why are you walking into our home heavily armed yeah. and armored? You know, it's just why a not? fashion thing. Well, the good news, guys, is that because Reagan's uh, not wearing any armor, she does have regular stealth checks for now. So, Whoa. that's so good news, oh, everybody. That's good, I guess, if we need to be stealthy against this monster that came out to yeah. talk to us directly. Monty, what's your uh, what's your uh, dexterity? Fifteen. Okay, you go before us. You both got sixes, and the way you break in, uh, initiative ties like that generally is uh, you decide who has you figure who has the highest dexterity, which is you. Okay. Rufus is strong, not fast. Okay. Uh, Reagan, you're first. Okay. Hmm. Sorry, I have to actually think and strategize a little bit, because Reagan and Diana are trying to figure out whether or not all physical attacks aren't going to work, or if it was just the fist not working. <laughs> or just my fist! Yeah. Well, you, you might as well try and get it with, like, um, piercing or slashing damage with your sword. I'll say this. It's it's coming at you. It's not it's not shy about that. Okay, well she's not thinking about it then. So let's just uh, do an attack roll with the long sword because that's what I've got, and that's a twenty. So I'm gonna assume that hits. Not nap, but I mean, yeah, it hits. But like, what if it didn't? Who knows? Who knows? I mean, well, Monty's <laughs> um, what was it? Eighteen hit. <laughs> seventeen. But 17? who knows if that? It was maybe, seventeen with eighteen damage. Maybe it wasn't in attack mode yet. I don't know. Oh, who knows? <laughs> so, yeah. So one d eight. Um, that's one the one D8. plus strength. So that's four. But then also she gets to attack twice. Also, you have the dueling proficient. You have the oh dueling yeah, fine so style. six. I just noticed. That. And if that is your sword, if that is your sword howling, then it is plus one as well. It's plus one. Atta- uh, plus one yes. sword. Yes. So seven damage. So you had four, four plus two plus one plus one is eight. So yeah. eight, eight cool. damage on the first yeah, one. Yeah, eight damage. Um, so, uh, so as as the uh, as this sort of mass of darkness starts sl- sl- kind of like lurching towards you, uh, pulling pulling behind it, whatever like the rest of it, these tendrils. Uh, I think that you uh, the first one that kind of slaps down in front of you, you just raise forward and slice, cleaving clear through it, uh, and it, it like as you cut it. Uh, the tendril does not like reform, and the t- and what you slashed uh, suddenly it seems to go from like three dimensional to just a two dimensional shadow. Hmm. Uh, so like like a regular right? shadow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And now make a second attack. Yeah. Is, does a fourteen hit? Uh, fourteen does not hit actually. Okay. No. Um, I think that, that this one, uh, you kind of go, uh, emboldened by your first swing. I think you go at another one. Uh, this time, though, it seems a little more prepared, and it just twists out of the way, uh, and your sword scours along the wall. Okay, swords work. Cool. Cool. 
Hello friends, thank you so much for coming to this week's episode of Masks and Martyrs. This is your producer Diana, and I have some housekeeping and plugs to take care of. First of all, if you're enjoying our show, we would love if you could leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening, and make sure you're subscribed to the podcast so you never miss an episode. We really appreciate you guys being here and discovering this world along with us, especially now that we're getting really heavy on the intrigue. We hope you guys are enjoying us. If you like this, you'll probably be interested in the other shows on the Nerdification Media Network. We just brought back It Could Have Been Great, which I believe some of you transferred over from that podcast. So that'll be going on a monthly basis and will be available on Spotify soon, but is currently available wherever you get your podcasts other than Spotify. Last but not least are the music credits. Our intro is Threads of Fate by Thomas Hart and Diana Paparozzi. Our mid-roll is Kevin McLeod's Dreamlike. And our ending theme is Mary Meet Meg by Hopper and the Books on Tape. And later this episode, you will also be hearing a track called Part of a Name by Diana Paparozzi. All right, I'm going to let you guys get back into the episode now. Thank you so much for stopping by. So, at this point, uh, the creature, it's a creature's turn, um, it has covered the distance uh, relatively quickly. Since y'all are around uh, 30 feet away, it gets up uh, in your faces, and uh, it is going to attempt a sweeping attack. So, this is going to be uh, at everybody. Okay. I'm just going to make one attack roll of everybody, uh, okay. because Not that's a lot faster than going through every single one. Yep. Uh, that is going to be a 21 versus AC. <laughs> yes. no, just hits, mm. just barely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Y'all take. Dang, that was not bad at all. Uh, for you, he uh, on three d six, you guys got hit by. It was a one, one, and a two. Oh, um, nice. So, uh, so four so damage. Take nine, you're going to take nine points of damage, and at that point, I think that you all sort of start to notice that. Um, well, Breaker has the highest passive perception, so I think Breaker notices that. Um, as it like as it like scythes through with its with its uh, with one of these tendrils, uh, and it then slams against the wall. Uh, the tendrils are beginning to uh, spread into uh, the sort of adjacent rooms uh, of mm-hmm. this corridor, uh, as if they are attempting to fill more and more space. Uh, Brika, you're up. Okay, I guess Brika will just attack with her dagger. Yeah. Uh, which dagger? Is it like, does she have flame tongue? I think based on Brika's like, like yeah. Brika's is generally small and or a deck of cards. Brika could have gotten her hair. I, I feel. Like, I, I, I also feel like Brika is a bit more accustomed to like hiding her shit. You know. Mm. So it, are you lighting it, babe? I was gonna leave it. Okay. So seven plus nine is sixteen. Sixteen does hit. Yeah. Okay, so then you're just attacking like a regular dagger. Mm-hmm. And then does she get sneak attack because Reagan's with it? I mean, we're all within five feet of it. Yeah, it's everybody's everywhere. engaged with, with the with the horrific like shadow creature. I think it's fair. Seventeen. Seventeen damage. Seventeen. Got it. Um, yeah. So uh, at that point, uh, Brika, is that it for you? Uh, yeah, I think so. Monty, you're up. I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna cast flaming sphere. Where are you locating the flaming sphere? It, it, so how big is this room? The corridor y'all are in is uh, 40 feet by 10 feet. Uh, okay. 40 feet. So like y'all entered at the stairs, which are currently 10 feet behind you. Uh, at the end of the hallway is that door to that room. Okay. Can I still see the mask? Yes. The mask is still there. I'm going to put it like right at the mask. Like the mask is incorporated in the 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 front part of the sphere and then behind it as well. Okay. Yeah, so so, so so you're kind of so like you're it seems like where the neck would be. Yeah, yeah. If if it had a neck, that's where it would be. Sure. Um. Yeah. And so he is. It is to make. Uh. What's the role? Dexterity save. Dexterity save. Um. Oh wait. Never mind. That's that's potent cantrip. Also, for my future reference, was that sweeping attack? Does that count as a melee attack? Uh. Yeah, I think so. so. Okay. Cool. Anyway, future reference. Continue. Also, there's there's no one else in near like inside him, right? Like Reagan and and uh, Brico. No, no, no. Y'all y'all are all kind of like standing like shoulder to shoulder in this situation. Okay, cool. Because I actually have a way that I can prevent that from hurting people if I, that were to be a problem in the future. Got that spell shape in or something? I got sculpt spell. Dang, Diana out here just like just like everything. It comes. It's like it's gnosis, nas that, 
You got that. Yeah, you know. Now we know. We know. We know. We know. Um, so I think based on the size of this creature and where you're trying to position it, um, I don't think you're able to get it like quite where you want it to. But I do think that like uh, you sort of like like essentially you uh, pull out uh, the spell components and you and you sort of like cr- like crush them into a ball. Uh, you turn your hand around. You turn your you swirl your finger around the clenched fist once, twice. And then with the third one, you, with the third uh, sort of revolution of your finger, you re- open your hand, and there's just this white hot ball of fire for a second, and then it flickers out, and then it appears larger, uh, five feet in diameter, uh, just like right, sort of like half lodged into the body of this creature, or into this sort of the main force of the darkness. And I think that it probably is not going to save with disadvantage, and it definitely does not. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, it's going to take two to six fire damage. So can you roll me that? That was, that was eight. Nice. And that was fire damage, right? Yes. It's good to know. I have a question about wizard stuff. If I have an arcane focus, do I still use spell components? Oh, you don't. I do not. Okay. You, you did. crush your arcane focus and the shards of I've glass. Got, I've got the giant floating book. That's my arcane focus. Monty just throws a book at it. And then, get, and then the book bookerangs right back to his hand. Actually, I have an idea for what Monty does. Monty, you know how like, when you hold open a book and like to show somebody else a picture that's in the centerfold or something? Monty just like pulls his floating book around and opens it and just blasts the sphere out of it like he's aiming a reticle. <laughs> Just pew, See, I was pew. saying he could rip out a page and eat it, and then spit out the spitball. <laughs> no, Monty would never, ever, ever, ever hurt a book. Nerd. <laughs> He's a nerd. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, anything else in your turn, Monty? Um, it's a bonus action, right? You still have one. I do have. Uh, can I move the sphere back through what looks like the creature to try and get it towards the door? Yeah. I think that's, I think that's Cause the, fair. Because the sphere does give off some amount of light, right? It's fire. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to see if there's anything I can see immediately in that room, because what I'm going to do on my next move, if I get one, is pull it back towards me and run it all the way through the creature. Oh, Monty, so fatalistic. <laughs> so you push this white hot ball of fire further into it, and for a moment... Uh, you see that it's leaving this, like, deep furrow through this massive darkness, which is filling up the entirety of this corridor. Pushing it in, pushing it in, pushing it in, and then you see that this sort of tunnel, this makes tunnel you've created within this creature, uh, then begins to fill as the darkness, the solid darkness, begins to... Uh, <laughs> just reform gross. around it. I'm working on my Foley work. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so I think that, uh, I think doing that, I'm um, rolling another 2d6 for damage. I, 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 oh, cool. I do think that does something to it. I don't think that it's just like, like, I don't think it's just like, no, nah, it's good. I, I like, I like this dice. That was 10. Nice. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, Rufus is going to step forward in front of all of you. And uh, he's going to make three attacks. Rufus. Why does he get three and I only get two? He's a level 11 fighter. Rude. What about me? Oh my god. (laughs) What about me? Reagan. (laughs) Strong as of anybody. (laughs) Well, Reagan, you're not a very high level fighter. Bullshit. Look at these guns. (laughs) Um. Okay. Yeah, she is the bender of this group. (laughs) So, um, none of you have ever really seen Rufus uh, fight before. And I think this kind of ties in with earlier when every now and then you realize like, oh, Rufus is an exceptionally strong person. Like Rufus has, Rufus is like incredibly muscular. I think that as he steps forward, uh, sort of placing himself between uh, the danger and his comrades, I think that maybe for the first time you sort of, realize why this man who seems so out of place in the city is in fact the champion of Hintilla. Rufus slides from a sheet uh, sort of 
uh, it looks like it was like strapped to his thigh uh, under his pants. Uh, he slides out a mace, which has like a very condensed iron ball on the end of it with a runes carved into it. And he brings it forward and he swings one, two, three times. And each strike, as soon as it hits the uh, this massive shadows, uh, it almost like, it's like he's hitting a wooden wall with a sledgehammer. The shadow almost splinters with each blow. And you see there are these like almost crater-like just depressions in this, in what was one sort of this teeming mass of shadow. And he just leaves these three huge welts there. Vroom, vroom, vroom. And then he plans himself once more between you and the creature. And he awaits whatever comes next. Hey, Rufus! Reagan. Reagan. You're up. She says, nice. <laughs> and also, hey, Rufus. That was that was Reagan, not me. So for my first uh, move, I'm going to slice it with my sword. Mm. And then dice choice. it with my dagger. Is that, that's an, that's an 18. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, yeah. No, I mean, no, yeah. it doesn't. Aw, oh, man, miss. Just miss all the way. Um, cool, 18 plus... Eight plus four plus one is thirteen. Thirteen, sure. Then we've only just begun, and that's a nat twenty. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. And that's another eight, so that's sixteen plus four plus one is twenty-five. 25. Plus two. Plus two. Dueling. Dueling, Dueling. right? Uh, the other one also. So plus four to all of that, my okay. friends. And um, tell me how that shadow's looking. So, Reagan, uh, you sli- you step forward uh, sort of shoulder to shoulder with Rufus, and you s- take two huge slashes out of it, these gouges, which at this point, like, the shadow isn't, like, the mass isn't putting itself together as much as it was. Uh, and after these two huge swings, um, the mass kind of turns to face the two of you. Still unreadable, still unmoving, this porcelain face. Anything else in your turn? Cool, she's gonna action surge. Let's do it again! Okay. Nice! Uh, does a 22 hit? Yeah. Yeah, probably does, huh? Um, so that's an 8 on the first one. And... 12. 12 on the second one. 12 does not hit. No, 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 no. It was a 22 with 12 damage. Sorry, I rolled two 22s in a row. Oh, cool. So... I, I, I think what's sort of happening is, is, like, is like Reagan and Rufus are just standing shoulder to shoulder and you two are just shredding uh, this mass of shadow. And earlier, uh, the wounds that y'all had been dealing to it, it seemed to be able to sort of draw up shadow from elsewhere uh, to fill in the gaps, fill in the, the furrows, the dents, the holes. Uh, however, between this concerted onslaught between these two fighters. Uh, it seems almost unable to maintain its form. And uh, the mask is going to turn to the two of you and it's going to say, soon enough. And then uh, the mask is going to fade back into the darkness. And the darkness is going to begin receding. Um, I, I'm not done yet. I'm not done with yet. Reagan recovers 10 HP. <laughs> God, okay. I wish I had that ability. Just for good measure. <laughs> anyway. So, Reagan cracks her neck. Um, so is the, the room that it came out of still advanced darkness? The, so the darkness seems to be receding back to that room. Well, I guess let's go make sure it's dead. <laughs> Rufus? Are we are we out of combat? Yeah, I think I think right now you're out of combat unless y'all are like... Are like Char are, are, are still like keep like chucking shit into the massive shadow. Well, one thing I did want to do is I wanted to try and pull the um, fireball back through it as it's trying to retreat. Okay, yeah. Um, give me, give me, give me just a straight intelligence check. Nat twenty. Yay! <laughs> so as it begins to retreat, uh, I think Monty, uh, you see that and. Uh, uh, your, your 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 book sort of like flutters uh, in front of you, and I think that you sort of I, I think you sort of like 
arc. I, I, I think you like trace your finger along the book to uh, almost arc this thing's fear back towards uh, this retreating mass. Oh, like a touch screen. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, that sounds very elegant way of putting it than I did. Um, uh, and uh, it kind of barrels forward. And I think that this does catch the mask off guard. And uh, you, ca- like, this kind of furrow that the fire leaves, this thing does not actually fill in. And you can see, uh, as you're looking, uh, like, the me- like a maybe like a quarter of the mask has just been completely, like, not, like, burnt isn't the right word, because burning implies there's, like, soot and charring. It's just, like, ha- a quarter of this mask has just been vaporized by the sheer heat of this flaming sphere. Yes! Uh, as it does, uh, y'all hear that psychic scream once more. I do need God to do saves again. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh no! Well, Reagan got a 12, and Brika got a 1. Yeah. Don't worry, Monty only got a 2. Okay. Wisdom save, plus, so that's a 6 for Monty. Uh... Y'all all take 12 points of psychic damage. God fucking damn it. Is Monty dead? But the but the mask was vaporized? Who wants to play the guess how much HP Monty has game? Uh, four. Six. He has six. Woo! So uh, the mask at this point, I think, has retreated into that room. Um, and this time there seems to be no just like otherworldly, like, impenetrable darkness in the doorway. Hey, Monty. What what y'all say? Uh, you want to take a nap? <laughs> Monty is like... Because most of the damage so far has been psychic to Monty. He's just like... He looks depressed. <laughs> That's what I imagine psychic damage looks like. And there's probably some blood coming out of your nose. Yeah, he just looks fucking whipped. Hey, hey, DM, can we take a short rest? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think you can. Uh, okay. Rufus, Rufus kind of looks at you guys and he's like, and he's like, well, you're not, you're not good to go? I mean, I'm good. Not unless, not unless you've got a healing potion. Uh, I, I don't, I just... I didn't think so. I don't. I, it sounded like something was kind of like, uh, trying to like scratch at my brain a bit. So mm-hmm. I just kind of like blinked it off, you know? Oh, that yeah. That must be nice. <laughs> So that's plus three. So you're at eleven. So I can, I could, I could hypothetically roll all five of my hit dice right this second if I wanted to. Yes, quite easily. Should I use all of my hit dice? Would that be a bad idea? I don't know. We did a lot of damage on it just now, and Reagan's at fifty-three hit points and now has second wind and action surge back. So we're probably gonna be fine. <laughs> what about? But what if we have something else like about be other than that that we have to fight? I mean, we probably have to fight more of that thing, if I had to guess. You'll be fine. Okay. All right. You guys uh, done updating your bullet journal calendar, Monty? Yes, I'm good. All right. Let's go look at some darkness. And Reagan's going to walk up to the the inky dark door, I guess. No, so again, uh, that door is no longer... uh... It's no longer impenetrable darkness. She's gonna go walk up to the regular door and I guess hold her torch in it because is it is it lit at all now or is it not not from the inside? But as you walk in, your uh, torch does catch light, which penetrates the room. Cool, let's do that. Sure. So uh, within, you come to what appears to be. It looks like, on the face, cells. There are five on each side, uh, cells, which have, uh, wrought iron bars. Uh, however, um, as you approach the bars, you begin to notice that these are very, very old iron bars, to the point where they are rusting, they are falling apart. This room seems to have not been in use for decades. But what strikes you is that within this room, there are toys. Mm. There are the toys of a child. There is a small night doll. There is a wooden sword. There are a couple little balls. And they are scattered around. uh, As you would expect to see in a nursery uh, where 
a messy child plays. So this is in the cells or in the room but that the cells are in? The, it's sort of scattered throughout. Okay. But it's outside of the cell doors? No, it is within the cell doors as well. Like, like, okay. like, the, oh. like all, all the cells are open. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. I got it. I understand. And I, and I think as you go in further, um, I think that you hear uh, quiet crying coming from the far left cell. Regan's going um, over there? Wait, 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 wait. Please wait. Can I cast the tech magic? <laughs> sure. Okay, so I don't have to do anything. I just I just cast it. And it takes you just it. cast it. Okay. And is there anything within 30 feet of me? Freak a smile. So <laughs> you sense there is magic ahead of you, and there is magic behind you. Since you are now within the room, there is magic behind you, and there's magic ahead of you. Can I see the aura of what is behind us? Uh, yes. Uh, I think that you see that the doorway uh, around the door frame, as you look closer, you can see that there appear to have been uh, rooms. They were previously mostly obscured by the darkness, but... So they, there are rooms sort of etched uh, all around this door frame. Hmm, that's not good. Uh, what school of magic is it? Uh, abjuration. Abjuration. Abjuration being uh, like uh, protective warding, denial magic essentially. And it and it's it is working like it is active. Uh, abjuration. No, something seems to have uh, penetrated it. Okay. Probably swords. Uh, and and in front of us, can I see what that aura is from? Um, that aura is a little less. It's more malleable than the uh, than the abjuration. Um, this is sort of uh, it's it's conjuration, transmutation, and evocation, um, all kind of t- mixed together. If that makes sense. That might be the shadow thing. Okay. Um. Well, I'll keep that up since as long as I can concentrate for 10 minutes, I can keep that up. Um, uh, guys, just so you know, the door we came through is like lousy with magic and there's more magic up ahead. But I think the magic in front of us might be the shadow monster. Well, the door, I mean, he told us if we walked through the door that the contract was sealed or whatever. So, I mean, that, that mm-hmm. tracks. True, true. So does that mean we, since we walked in the door, the compact is done? If he tries to split hairs with us about it, we should definitely get to see the manager this time. <laughs> Reagan's gonna go towards the uh, the weeping, crying. Okay, I guess we're gonna follow. Freka, are we following? Freka still. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I don't like that noise. That's a scary noise from Andrew. Okay, you approach. And uh, you turn the corner, you sort of poke your head around, I think. And uh, you see there was a small figure uh, kind of huddled in the corner, uh, not facing you. It is vaguely humanoid. But as you kind of, as you get a little closer, you're able to see that uh, the edges are, of whatever form this is, are not quite distinct. They shift every now and then. Okay. They weaken and sharpen. Uh, do I have Do I have a magical aura from it? Yeah, you got magical aura from that. That's, that's that okay. seems to be the source of it. Yes. Okay. And and in, it's right. You said it was a bunch of different schools of magic. Okay. Yes. Um, Reagan, whatever you do, be careful because that's the source. And it's like it's not the fun like oh haha this is to protect the area kind of magic. It's like fuck your shit up kind of magic. Like, summoned from another plane, possibly, and also the type of boom-boom magic that I use. Brie could talk to it. I mean, I'll go talk to it. We can all go. Okay, let's all go. Rufus, if that thing takes Uh, me out, I need you to do something for me. Delete my browser history. (laughs) You need it. Wait, are you you telling me to blast a cache? Blast my (laughs) cache! Yes, Rufus. Yeah, I can. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could go to the library and blast your and blast your cache of your library of your library 
browsing history. Thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Let's as go there on. are no yeah. computers in this world, I'm drawing that line. But li- you can browse a library for smut. I've decided. <laughs> No, she doesn't Where want anybody to know that she uh, she has a passion for being a chocolatier. She's checked out every book on chocolate and candy making in the library, but no one can <laughs> ever know. Aww. That's, I just That's, made that up. Well, too bad. Canon now. That's canon now. <laughs> it's can- she always dreamed of one day opening her own confectionery, mm. but then the world turned her into a bloodthirsty warrior. <laughs> and now thought. the only thing she hungers for is more blood. And, oh my God. and hot and raspberry bods. And hot dragon board bods! <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and then just anyway. bursting from the wall are four ripped oiled dragon borns, all this flexing. <laughs> Chocolate covered dragon borns! Anyway, floss by cash. <laughs> what a good music video that is in my head now. Anyway, um, so we're approaching the humanoid. Yeah. So, Check out uh, this crying figure. Uh, who who is taking point on this? Because that's going to kind of determine things. I think I think for the sake of this, um, not Reagan. Each of each each of you kind of have w- w- will have different approaches. I imagine, right? Yes. You'll also each have different uh, different kind of like uh, uh, checks to make. Um, the I, I think the others being there and helping along will give uh, advantage on most of these checks, but. Um, Sort of how this goes will determine will be determined somewhat on who is the one to kind of take the lead on this. I don't think Reagan's taking the lead. She's not. So um, Monty Monty can if that's okay with Brika. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Okay. Montague twenty points. <laughs> Bensmith is going to uh, walk up to this unknown creature somewhat cautiously. Does it react to him approaching? Um, not to approaching. Okay. Excuse me. Um. Child? <laughs> don't want to say little boy or little girl. I don't know. Kiddo. Sport. Tiger. Buddy. Champ. Ace. Slugger. <laughs> <laughs> this hey. is Brika and Reagan just, you know, <laughs> helping. <laughs> Hi. Um. What you what you doing down here? Are you okay? Uh, the figure does not turn to face you, but it says uh, in a surprisingly childlike voice. It says, "I'm not supposed to go upstairs anymore." They, they said I was bad. Why? He's, why? He's, he who said, said? He said. He said I couldn't be around anymore. He said I was. He said I was a liability. Who said that? The bad man. Okay. And and what's your name? I... I don't know. I think I... I think I used... When I was... I used to be in part of a name, but now I'm not. Well, what was that name? Do you remember? Julius. Isn't that, uh... That's Lord Goring. Right? Yes, it is. That is Lord Goring's first name. Um. Well, can I call you Julius for now? Just so I'm not calling you hey you? Monty's like trying to smile like, hey, maybe I can get this person to cheer up a tiny bit. Uh, the figure doesn't respond, but kind of like, still not facing you, you can sort of see like that on the outline of a head nod. Okay. Um. Well, so the bad man said that you can't leave. Um, have you been down here all alone? Uh, no response, just to get another nod. Okay. Well, my name is, um, my, you can call me Monty, Montague Pensmith, but that's like really long, so you can call me Monty. Um, these three, uh, these guys are my friends. Um, would you like to meet them, or would you rather just be me? The little Julius does not seem... does not seem to know how to respond to that. Um, okay. I think... Can you give me an insight check real quick? Mm, it's not the best. 
That's a 10, unfortunately. Um, I think that you're definitely see, like feeling that there is fear in this whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but I think more than that, uh, you're kind of picking up a little bit of like, it's not, it may not be mature enough, almost. Mm. If that makes any sense. Um, can I... Is there any way that I can tell without touching him first, is there any way that I can tell whether or not it is physically here? Or am I looking at a projection? Um, roll me... So you can either touch it, attempt to, or we can do a perception check. Well, I'm going to start with a perception check. I'll try and touch him after that. Okay, roll me your perception check. That's not the worst uh well that's just an 11 i mean can can we help like because the thing is is that monty doesn't really want to like turn away from him he really doesn't want to turn his back on him um so without breaking eye contact with julius he kind of like over his shoulder you guys noticed anything uh, untoward while i've been talking to julius here let me ask my old friend, Mr. Twenty Sides. <laughs> nope. Oh, break! I got the twenty. <laughs> Yay! So, um, <laughs> what are your what are your cobalt eyes see? Yes. Um, how long would y'all say you've been in here? I don't know, about five, maybe five minutes. Yeah. I yeah, I thought it was like I thought it was like ten. No, 10, I, no, I think I, th- I think that minutes is good. Um, Brika, it seems solid, but you notice something else with a natural twenty. Okay. Um, there is a figure who was crouching at the door and is now, and just stands up as you notice him. Oh, God. Th- that kid checks up, but this is, hmm. And, um, Brika is going to, uh, throw down a smoke bomb and teleport across the room. <laughs> no, she's, so she's, so. she's going to raise her dagger, uh, as if to say, don't fuck with me. I've got the power of God and anime on my side. <laughs> Can you, can you roll for Intimidate check for me, then? If you're gonna have the power of God and anime on your side, yeah. Ten. She's so small. She's very small. <laughs> so Brinka pulls out her dog and just kind of like jabs it forward twice in the air over at the figure. So I, she, she doesn't want anyone thinking they can sneak up on her. Um, and uh, uh, the figure, you just kind of hear... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Oh god. Do the rest Are of us hear that? Uh yeah, I think I think y'all hear like the low chuckle, certainly. Okay, yeah, Monty is whipped around and is not yeah, looking at Julius. Ready <laughs> fucking pirouettes. <laughs> okay, now who are you? A familiar voice calls out. It's the orc. Uh indeed, uh it is Giles, the butler standing there. It's always the butler. Uh and um, he has, uh, he's sort of standing there, and uh, you see that in one hand is a wand, and the other hand is a piece of chalk. And uh, and uh, he says, I must say, you really have provided uh, a knight of usefulness. You raised the young lord's spirits, and you uh, brought certain elements back under control. I'll have to be more careful about it in the future. I didn't realize the link was still so strong. I wasn't bleeding off enough of it at the time. Would I intuitively know what he's talking about? Because I'm a Uh, No, this is not magic that I think that you studied in the classical uh, arcane tradition of the eight schools. Okay. Oh, cool. Giles, thanks for coming to get us uh, once we killed the thing. So we good here? We're done? You are, yes. Monty is kind of positioning himself between Julius and Giles. Um, uh, he, uh, G- Giles kind of like, uh, uh, he sort of looks at him and he says, It will be, uh, difficult to explain exactly what happened, especially to the champion of the city, but I am certain that, uh... Hey, Rufus is smart. <laughs> <laughs> You gave Monty a fucking heart attack. I like to think that they're both laughing. Oh, Rufus and the child. Oh, oh no, it's just Andrew. God. Oh, my 
my god, that was so good. Like, ominous statement. Hey! <laughs> He's smart. <laughs> smart. He's smart. Like, oh my god, that was yeah. good. Oh, I'm sorry. Listen, uh, Reagan doesn't read the atmosphere. She's not good at reading the room. <laughs> uh... Uh, he, uh, Giles kind of, um, yeah, he's, uh, you see that, and a, a, a small smile, like, stretches over his tusks, and he says, Well, I'm certain you'll be able to explain it to him. It's been a while what? since I've had to dispose of anyone in here, so oh, okay, we're doing still this. work. Mm? Giles, what have you done to, to Julius here? Small enough thing. Small enough? <laughs> Explain! The master is a sentimental man. Sentiment is not what he needs to survive. It's what got his father killed. It's what landed the master with his injury. <laughs> Lady Claudia almost died herself because of the former lord's... Um, Optimism. So, uh, it was a small thing, but just as a doctor must sometimes uh, bleed out an infection, sometimes you must bleed away something. Then it must go somewhere. I must admit I did not expect it to take on such a personality, but there was enough binding to be done to it. The mask was useful enough. I must say I haven't been uh, as vigilant as I should have been about keeping it uh, under control. Have you been that fighting well a enough. childhood trauma? <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah, it sounds like, What did up. you take from him? In Orcish, the word is rota. Okay. <laughs> but such things, uh, well, in my tribe, they were always viewed as a weakness, and so there was it's a not way. Not your to place to say that. Reagan has not put her sword away and is starting to stalk towards Giles. Uh, he doesn't even look at you, Reagan. Uh, cool. Hold on. She's gonna hold keep on, doing that then. Hold on. Maker. What do we have to do to fix this? R Reagan's halfway across the room. I'm not sure what you mean. You can't just steal. You can't just steal someone's childhood, someone's. S half of someone's sense of self from them. What is wrong with you? I have done what I had to in order to protect the Lord. Uh, Reagan, at this point, um, you reach the doorway. Cool. He is ten feet away from you. Okay. Oh, actually, since I still have Detect Magic up, is he, like, glowing? <laughs> yep. There's a lot of magic coming from over there. Okay. Reagan, be careful. Remember that time that Reagan choked Slam Delane Von Tepler into a wall? Yeah. I'd like okay. to choke slam Giles Von Asshole into a wall. <laughs> um, Fuck Reagan, him up. Uh, you take a step forward. Make a charisma saving throw for me. Uh, you know how Reagan's got all that charisma. So oh, good. Kind of magnetic charisma, you know. 18. Not bad. Oh! Make another charisma saving throw for me. Second one? Not 20! We'll do this all night! <laughs> Make a yes! third charisma saving throw for me. Oh my god. Five minutes. Another nat 20! Number four. Come at me! <laughs> oh my god. Nine. Reagan, the first, like, inch of this threshold, you feel something trying to force you back. And you... You begin, like, you can feel, and you just start to, like, you push through it. And there's a second one. And once more, you feel this pressure, and it's mounting now as if it's building on what you already have stepped through. You force through this one, finding a third, and you, thinking this is it, 
finally it! And then there is a fourth. And you are thrown back uh, 20 feet. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and you kind of like come skidding back with the others. And uh, Giles sort of sighs and he says, A professional does take precautions. Hey guys, he has a force field. <laughs> um, can Nothing. I cast hold person? Yeah, you can try. Well, I don't have to do anything. If it affects him, he has to cast a wisdom saving throw. Um, you, uh, sort of... I've uh, got my book, I'm ready to go. Your, your book just, like, flies open. You push your hand out. Uh, palm up, palm up raised. You twist your hand as you clench it into a fist. And as you yell out the, the word for, uh, for the spell, uh, you just hear, Grosh! And he counterspells it. And uh, uh, he looks at you all and he says, Well, I had hoped to give you some, uh, at least some, the courtesy, I should say, of uh, knowing a bit more. But I can see you're not interested in that. Oh, no, I'm interested. I just don't want you to go anywhere. Uh, he turns his back to you and he says, I'm glad the great still work in there. I'll come and collect you soon enough. And he begins God walking away. Can I try another spell before he gets away? Hold on, pause. Brika is going to pull a card. Yeah! Oh, oh fuck. The liars run. Oh, fuck. Hold on. Let me get that <laughs> Thank you.